How did you get caught up in that Rico charge? Through an informant. Okay, and what were your business? What were your business dealings with the Colombo family, or was it Sunny itself? Or well, you know, they got to have two predicate acts to bring you in on a Rico charge. Rico is racketeering, influence, corrupt organization. Uh, my first predicate act was distribution of cocaine, 50 kilos or more. It was all created by the informant who sat on my couch wearing a wire inside his watch. Yeah, that's where they put him. They put him inside watches or they'll put him in the ear. They can put him any place today. No more of that wiring up stuff that you see. Uh, and a friend of mine, a Jamaican boy, was uh, in downtown Los Angeles, NDC, where they were transferred in Hendon, North Carolina. And his wife came to me with two Mexicans, and there was a half a million dollars owed to him on the streets back in Brooklyn. They asked me to get it for them. And the informant sitting there, oh, the, I called the guys, I knew who they were. They already had 100 grand ready. So we had that picked up that evening. Uh, now the informant starts talking to the Mexican and says, you know, we want 50 kilos every two weeks. I got the truck, we'll transport them. And, you know, and everything's going through Ori. And I'm sitting there, I never done cocaine business. Okay. Um, you know, oh, we'll make a lot of money. And he rattles off these numbers and no shit, you can make that much. And uh, then when he went back to New York, he talked to Sonny's nephew, who was the acting capo of the Colombo family, uh, Michael Cotapano. And he starts telling Michael all the money that they're going to make with Ori on this cocaine deal. Michael and I never had a conversation about it. Never. Michael never called me up to confirm it. And it just went back and forth like that. The informant went between the two of us. And it was Michael and I who got indicted for the cocaine conspiracy. And then my second predicate act had to do with what they called a home invasion robbery here in Burbank. And it was a setup robbery. It was not a real robbery but it had to be set up to look like it was a real robbery. And uh, so it was those two predicate acts. Fortunately, the informant on a trial before us, his name was Guy Fatato. He was so bad at the trial, they caught him lying so much. The judge declared him the worst informant he ever seen on all his years in the bench. And I'm talking about Judge Weinstein, who's still on the bench today, and he's 90-something years old. So he's been there a long time. They just wanted to use the few tapes he had against me. Okay. And ultimately, my attorney said, no, you bring him to the courtroom. They didn't want to bring him. So I, I got ended up, uh, they dismissed that charge as long as I pled guilty to a gun charge and I got a minimum mandatory sentence of 60 months, five years. No good. So how did the informant come into your life? How did Guy come into your life? How did he get around you? Through Sonny Franchise. Okay, so thank God you couldn't be blamed for bringing the informant to New York or sending him there. Thank God that was... Well, Sonny introduced me to him at La Mala's restaurant on Mulberry Street, New York. And, you know, Sonny was grooming this guy to become a made man. And that meal, on that meal, my daughter and my grandkids came into New York. They were at the, the I'll never forget listening to that recording 
when I was in prison. And I'm hearing my grandchildren. I mean, but yeah, you know, you know that was a big mistake that Sonny made. But for, for kids who are thinking about getting into this life, tell us how prevalent informants are, how many of them there are out in the streets. I talked to a friend of mine back in New York. There are so many informants now on the street. And, but, and Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, they have so many informants that they're, wi- they're wiring each other. <laughs> You know, and actually, John Franchet, Sonny's son, who became an informant on our case and wore wires. When Guy Fatat was out here, I got Johnny, who was living out here, and me, him, and Johnny had lunch at the Ivy restaurant, and I'm sitting between the two of them. Now, I didn't say nothing intimidating or to get me in trouble or anything of that nature. But they were both wearing a wire on me at the same time. So how many informants? There's more informants on the streets than anybody could imagine. The world has changed. It's a different world. I always say I should have been born in the 20s and brought up in that era. Uh, Those were when there were really real men. And you didn't have telephones, you didn't have computers. If you saw a camera, you ran. Uh, because you know it was law enforcement. And uh, yeah, things have changed. The world has changed. I hope you guys enjoyed this story and please stay tuned for future videos and like, share, subscribe and leave any suggestions for future videos in the comment section. Thank you.